strict apartheid policies flare into shocking violence. A 42-year-old African lawyer, Nelson Mandela, the most dynamic leader in South Africa today. He is still underground. I have dedicated my life to this struggle of the African people. Today we begin a five-part series by producers Joe Richmond and Sue Johnson. The story of the struggle against apartheid, told through rare sound recordings, the voice of Nelson Mandela himself, as well as those who fought with him and against Hello guys, welcome on another episode and today's vlog we are going to explore Soweto, Soweto where Nelson Mandela he lived, yeah and his house, the tower and other things that we can see and I heard there's a famous street over there too, we can also explore, see Mama Africa. <laughs> A typical Ghanaian way to carry the baby. So uh, let's go. Our Uber is already here. That is why you come to see with your man. You are just one people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the day we are in what, what. The bit were whites and dominated everything. And they were both. We made it to um, the Sueto Tower. Unfortunately, it's not operating today because they have a lot of activities going on here. And mostly it's on Wednesday and Thursday, but we didn't know so. I think they have the paintball and then is it bumpy jumpy something it all happens here but then we came at the wrong time so we have to go and maybe I don't think we will come here again but maybe some other time again <laughs> We just made it to the Mandela house and this is uh, Mandela's house in Blakazia Street, Orlando West, Soweto. This is Mandela's house and then we are going inside. Let's show you around what they have for us. This pictures of you, no videos, man. No videos. Mandela came out of prison first night out he spent in Desmond Tutu's house in Cape Town because Desmond has got a house here and other houses in Cape Town so when he was arrested you know he was in Robben Island he went to Cosmo so when he got out just to have that African meal and enjoy it so and uh, by then Desmond Tutu had already won a Nobel Peace Prize so that's why they said Nelson Mandela spent his first night of freedom after being released from prison in Archbishop Tutu and his wife Leah in Cape Town. So both Tutu and Mandela were recognized in the greatest possible way by winning the Nobel Peace Prize 
10 years apart. The two men speak of each other with tenderness and high rewards. So now when you remember when Desmond Tutu passed on last year, the current president Maposa was quoting Mandela's uh, lines which is sometimes strident, often tender, never afraid, seldom without humor. Desmond's voice will always be the voice of the voiceless. And the reason obviously why he never got arrested, he was, you know, uh, attacking it uh, in, a, in, a, in a church, you know, uh, a view and also because he was a bishop, Mandela was a, a, um, a lawyer fighting the system. So they thought Mandela is a terrorist. You see, that's why the CIA was also the one busy with the government, giving them resources so that everyone that is fighting against the system, they track them down. You remember there's a letter from CIA there yeah. apologizing to Mandela for giving away his location. Because what happened was, uh, the NC when it started, there was no violence. They wanted to do everything peacefully. But now the government here, you know what they did? Even students marching, they would shoot. Even women marching, they would shoot. So every protest turned into a massacre. Then Mandela and their friends decided, no, it's time to fight fire with fire. That's when he went uh, across the country to go seek for support. And on his way back, he was caught. But now the sentence was for leaving the country without proper documents and he was sentenced to five years. Yeah. But when they raided the Lilies farm in Rivonia and found his writing and the other ones, the charges were later added on to treason, where it was the treason 12, you know, then they were all uh, sent to Robben Island. So obviously Mandela was very vocal also. And Mama Winnie was back here talking gunning for support, doing everything. That's why even the government didn't like Mama Win. You see, they even detained her for three months in solitary confinement without no bucket or anything. Imagine that when you're a woman. That could really change you, you know. They didn't even give her, they just put her in that room. Like ours? Yes, they closed that room. And now in that room, the window is there and it's a small window like this. And now the only thing she was eating was porridge that they threw underneath. They didn't care about that she's uh, menstruating or something. They just didn't care. So imagine three months in solitary. And that obvious. Yeah, exactly. You know, African history is the same because the oppressor is the same people. Exactly. So now, this is now Desmond Tutu talking about Mandela. When he says, God Kelly has a soft spot for us because he gave us a memorable man, Nelson Mandela, for which we South Africans will forever be grateful. We are richly blessed to have him in our midst and to be able to bask in his reflected glory. You know, that's why now I someone scratch it, but that's Mandela talking about Tutu and Tutu talking about Mandela. So that's why now you see the two pools, you know, because it's the only one where you find such men. Where's the other song for the little it's one? Here. Oh, got it. Okay. And all his uh, artwork is full in Soweto, all the popular spots in Soweto. So when you take a picture here, they definitely know that you were here in Soweto. Even if you can post it, those who know, they say this is Vilakazi, Soweto. You know, so this is a very, very famous uh, guy and a famous eyes because he always draws these eyes. He's also got a shop there by Nelson Mandela when you turn where you find t-shirts with these. And he can even... Montutu, well-renowned champion of human rights, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 for his decades of non-violent struggle for racial equality. In 95, he was appointed by President Mandela to chair the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So this has been the family home of Desmond and Leah since 1975. So they continue, or they celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary here, and it continues to be their Jobek residence. So whenever he was this side after I retired, he never went to a hotel. He came to sleep in this house here. You know, and people think because he was shot, maybe it was his escape door, but uh, that's where they brought coal on. You see, yeah. And like I said, Mandela, it was 94, Desmond Tutu, 84, 10 years before Mandela came out. 
The schooling, the history of schooling in Soweto. You know what used to happen? The government used to pay 644 on the education of every white child, yet only 42 rands on a black child in 1967. So there were 58 people to every teacher and throughout the 70s, this ratio increased. Some students only received a few hours of tuition each day as they had to be taught in shifts. Education standard dropped and people became dissatisfied. And also what made them dissatisfied, when the books came back, they came back written in Afrikaans. So now everyone after a year failed so dismally. I think 98% of uh, all the schools they failed and now they decided no we're not going to have that we're going to protest peacefully again to go down the street here go on the other side where there's the police station to hand over the memorandum and tell them that we're not going to be taught in africans because imagine if you were learning mathematics you have to learn dutch then you can learn uh, uh, mathematics with dutch if it's 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 uh, even physics or anything, it starts with the Africans. So Africans was supposed to be the medium of instruction. Like when you go to Namibia, they still talk Africans, you know. So when the student was supposed to go down, the police came there. They draw a line and they said, we give you just a few seconds. But before anything could happen, the constable had a dog with him. The dog was called Shaka and Shaka was only taught to bite black people. Hey. So he saw a lot of students and he was let go to the student and the student don't play. They took the stones, they never had guns, took the stone, they stoned him so bad, they threw him back and he landed on the line between the police and the student. The constable took a walkie-talkie, walkie-talkie the police station which is on the east side and said, one of our own has been taken down, come running and come with vengeance. Imagine, just for a dog. Then they started shooting uh, a younger kid, eight years, but now they didn't have a photo of him. That's why you cannot find it. Then the second one to be shot was Hector Peterson. And Hector Peterson was 12, just turning 13, but he was shot. And he was not even a student in one of these schools. The sister was the one in there. You saw the sister was even there with white people wearing a bucket hat, the short one. There's another tall one also. The short one, that's the sister. So now they ran that way going to the... Because now they were supposed to go take the kid to the clinic. But now there was a guy over there on the other side who had a camera. And he was working for a, a new local newspaper, but he was... Uh, not at work that day so because he had his camera with him he started taking pictures taking pictures and he saw the police busy with the student but at the same time he saw that they were approaching him so what he did was now he changed the film put on a fresh film and hit the other one in the socks you know and when the police got to him he was even detained he was even beaten you know but now luckily those pictures were safe so now here in South Africa, they tried taking out those pictures, but all those publications that tried taking out those pictures were banned. No more working. Five of them, imagine. So that picture now came out on another country in Botswana. And the guy that was carrying Hector Peterson, if you can imagine, now that's the sad story. Okay. Go in there. That guy shot the pictures. He so the exact 
box. So now this corner here will be where Hector Peterson was shot. You know? And now he was shot in the corner there. So this line is actually connecting the dock and the museum because they couldn't build it here because of the space. That the police did on the floor, but also connect to the spot where he was shot. Please continue. When the trees continue, is symbolization of is the that kids. Why they know? Yes, so that you can see that it's from like this, and then the trees continues in line. Then after the robots, are, it continues again, but in the middle now it's flowers. You know. Because why they didn't have space here and uh, they needed to make three stories of memories coming to the day that Hector Peterson was shot. But not only that, just the whole apartheid system, how it worked and everything that happened back in the days. You know? So if we jump that side, that's where now we're going to get a depiction of the day because it all happened in this corner here and you can imagine after that atrocity there were many shoes left behind oh. so as you can see this name was the student confrontation you see with the student confrontation if i could ask you one question if you check this guy here what's the difference between this guy and these ones Beside that, it looks like this, meaning he had so much confidence. Yeah. What else do you recognize that's different about him? This one looks like the cops. Oh. Yeah. And this one looks like the students. Yeah, also the dog. The dog, yeah. And also the police you could only see with the hats. Yeah. But also, if you can check proper, if you check the nose. Can I stand on it? Yes. Yeah. It's a white you see, so if you see the nose, now the nose tell you it was not a black man. Yeah. Because you see all these noses, yeah, the way they are, shot. and also uh, you see that these ones, the way they are standing, they are standing like this, they were protesting. Mm -hmm. That's why you see the other one with the boat there, you know, because they wrote something there that, hey, no more Africans, you know, we are done with Africans. So that's why it happened here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bector Peterson was actually a student that side, but he was coming this side because these are high schools. He was coming to check out the sister because he was younger, the sister was older, so the sister carried the key. So every time after school, the sister would pick him up. But that day, because they were let out early because of the chaos, he was the one coming to check the sister because now he cannot go home. But when he came here, that's when he was met up with a gunfire. But also, the guy that was carrying Hector Peterson was just a civilian who was helping a kid. But you know what happened? after those pictures came out he was the most wanted man police thought because he looks taller he's going to tell them something or he's the organizer of the whole thing or if they get him they will get all the information but that guy was just a but now what happened was first day when he ran he hid in this church here then after that bah, area from there he was sending letters until those letters stopped i people think maybe they got to him you know because when the lotter stopped and when he was sending letters he was also giving away the location you so because now he thought he was in nigeria very far he thought no they're not gonna catch me but not knowing that the government had a long arm they worked with cia they worked with everything they've got all the resources to take down a man so that's why when they talk about him they said he is or he was because they even haven't found him even yet out of town you see that white mountain that's sort of like um, a dumping place for the gold mine so that is not uh, god made it's man made you know and now all around the Soweto they were full of these things so when they put people here imagine it was just houses no shops no proper sanitation, no anything. Mm -hmm. It was just houses in the desert, in a, in a plain field. And imagine, people were not used to that. They, they were used to living nice where they used to live in Sophia town, which was 
not in the middle of town but on the side of town so they brought all the blacks to a place where yes. there was no store nothing nothing just houses so that in that way even uh, you were not allowed to even build a wall like this <laughs> even that house you were not uh, so supposed to own it for blacks this belongs to the yes. african yes but now all these things the title deeds and the change came after mandela came out of prison because you couldn't build a wall you didn't own the house it was a 99 year lease for your father and when your father dies the lease starts afresh you see meaning you'll never own it because if your father uh, got this house maybe when he got married and he was in the 30s when he dies he's in his 70s uh, that's how many years that's 20 to 40 years but after that when he dies the lease starts again at one you see so now these are all the high school so what, what happened was now after the day of the uprising a lot was happening police were coming in numbers going to almost every house looking for students looking for someone that maybe they can put something on you know and a lot of brothers and sisters they ran away they went to exile it's more than 12 to 15 thousand students that ran because now imagine when they catch you they go put you in a, a farm called flag plus they put your hands like this to your feet they align you then they make a fire their big fire and they start drinking then they ask you one question but they said don't tell them they just take one of you and put them in the fire do you see they just take one of you put them in the fire take the second one put them in the fire then then they go to the third one that's tell us everything even if you don't know you're going to talk because you saw your brothers burning now now so people didn't want to be caught because they know that it's either they will come back or they won't come back or if they come back they will come back maybe not okay maybe crippled or something wrong you know because he was not found also now this is a message from his mother that says Mbuisa is or was my son but he is not a hero in my culture picking up Hector is not an act of heroism it was his job as a brother if he left him on the ground and somebody saw him jumping over Hector he would have never be able to live here Mama Makubo Mbuisa's mother you know because it's our culture of respect so now when they were unveiling you must know that the first tree was planted by nelson mandela the second tree by bill clinton and the third tree by uh, archbishop desmond tutu when it was unveiled back in the days please connect the entrance of the museum to the site where hector peterson was shot you remember after uh, the line the trees they follow after the trees is the line again you know mm -hmm. so as you saw that okay it's the museum but where we come from we were where we were at uh, ngakane and filagazi ngakane and filagazi is mandela's house you see that's why you see everything written and, and put on like that so if you check number 10 uh, ngakane and filagazi mandela house you see then we went down until we got to Bakela and we got to Desmond Tutu's house. Then we came up Vilagazi to a spot where Hector Peters was shot, which is Kona Moyema and Vilagazi. Then we went like this, we went and now we are over here at the museum. You see. So these are the name of the streets and how the Orlando West is looking alike or look like. So that's why you find this is the significant site which is now Uncle Tom's Community Hall is this one here. That's where the NC used to hold a lot of meetings with the students and the students also used to do their own meetings there. That's where they used to meet. You know? So number three, Walter and Albertina Sulu's house, which is that why Holy Cross is that church. Mbuisa Makubo's primary here. Zef Abenyam Tupeng's house is just behind site where Hector was shot over there. Uh, the Orlando West High School, that same high school, Pefeni Junior School, which is this one here, Mandela Museum of Yasin, Desmond and Leah Tutu's house.